Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Let us magnify the Lord and ask him to come down and be with us tonight. As we open the scriptures, let us ask the Lord to open our hearts and our minds to give us understanding. We want a fresh, fresh breeze, fresh anointing from the Lord. We want the word of God to explain the word to us. Father, Lord God Almighty, you are the only teacher we have. We have no other pastor. In healing wings, oh God, you are the pastor. You, Father, Lord God Almighty, are the one that opens the hearts and minds of men to receive your engrafted word, the word that is more than able to save souls. And so, Lord God Almighty, we call upon you tonight. That you, oh God, come and teach us, come and educate us, come and enlighten us. Father, Lord God Almighty, there's so much that we don't know. Too much. But you, oh God, are our teacher. So, Lord, we invite you tonight. Come and use the tongues of the people that will be in this discussion to speak expressly to us about the things that concern you, things that pertain to your kingdom, oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. It's a Bible study, another Thursday. Our scripture today is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 9. Romans 3, 9. I'm going to read it from verses 9 to 18. Romans chapter 3, 9 to 18. What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry, I didn't know I didn't open that to you, but anyway, you heard it. I didn't know I went underneath to open it. Abigail, good evening. Is Amara here? Yes, she is. My first question is to Amara. Amara, would you like to get married at some time in the future? Good, good evening. Did you hear my question? Yes, I, I did, but I'm, I'm not sure. You're not sure? <laughs> Why, are <you> not? <laughs> Why are you not sure? <laughs> you are frustrated by questions, but I expect you to say yes. Why would you? Why? Why? Why are you not sure? You know, marriage is an honorable estate established by God. If you would like to marry, would you like to marry a handsome man? Um, yes, I guess. Are you? Yes, I guess. It would, it would need to be handsome. It, it wouldn't need to be handsome, but... But it would be good if he is handsome. Yeah. 
but it would be a good thing if he's handsome, right? It would not be a bad thing. It would not be a bad thing. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure you are not studying law? Anyway, okay. Would you like to marry a good man? Yes. You find a good man. Someone who has a relationship with God. That's it. A good man, have you finished? Uh, that, that's the only attribute. A good man is somebody who has a relationship with God. Uh, from that relationship, they will, you would expect the person to be patient and forgiving. Yeah. Okay. All right. Samukwa. Good evening. Yes. Good evening, church. Good evening, doctor. Are you a good person? Sorry? Are you a good man? <laughs> by by Amara's definition. <laughs> <laughs> well, you the same thing. I asked you a question last time we met. Was it on Monday? <laughs> I asked you a question. You laugh just the same way you are laughing now. I don't know what. Uh, you, know, you know why I'm <laughs> worried? Because uh, are you a good person? No, because because you just finished. You just finished asking Amara about uh, her definition of a good man. So yes. and then you now ask me your question. So I'm saying, yeah, are we going by the definition that I've just heard? You no, know, your own definition will be different from Amara's now. Okay, let me answer it by saying I try to be. Okay, you try to be a good man. Yes. What, 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 how would you define a good man? A good man, by my definition, would be somebody who has a, a good relationship with God. Okay. And has and then um, is alive to his responsibilities to uh, his family and others around him. And also um, somebody who is willing to make the necessary effort to be all that God has prepared him to be. Wonderful. And you situate yourself in that category? I would want to believe so. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Abigail, I was greeting you because we haven't seen you or heard from you in quite a while, but um, I'm not sure what's happening. Is your system not working? Uh, we helped you to change your system some time ago. Are you here or you're not? Good, good evening, sir. Good evening. What's happened to you? Unmute your 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 your, your mic. Unmute your mic, Abigail. Your mic is muted. That's the third time I'm telling you. Hello, doctor, can you hear me? Wow. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm just not in a place where I can talk, sorry. Okay, let's just sorry. leave you there. You just, just listen. Okay. All right, yeah, Okay, thanks. thank you. Yeah. Mr. Adelike, good evening. Good evening, sir. Same evening, question George. I asked. The, the same question I asked uh, Sam. Are you a good person? I believe I'm a good person. Okay. Why do you because, believe so? Because I have relationship with God, who is a goodness. My father is a goodness. Is the embodiment of goodness. So, 
it is very important for me to follow his way because whatever he says, I do. And to be good, I have to walk in his righteousness. I have to obey his laws. I have to be like him, praying for him to help me to be like him, to walk in his way. That's the only way I think that uh, I, I, can, I can regard myself as a good man. So you think you're a good person? Given that yes, that's, I believe so. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Mr. Yandang. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Begay. What happened to your avatar? Um, I can see it. I'm not sure why you're not seeing it, but I, I can see it. We cannot see it from here. Oh, wow. All right, Begay, is, is there anything good about you? Uh, <laughs> Yes, I know. I think the, the one thing that is good about me. There is only one thing that is good about you. Yeah, first of all, like, well, well, let me let me take let me answer the question the way you presented it to. Okay, Dr. is there anything good about you? The question I asked Dr. is different from the one I asked you. <laughs> yes, I um I think I asked first, I asked Dr. I asked Dr. I said, Dr. Are you a good person? With you, I said, is there anything good about you? Different question. So don't answer somebody else's question. Okay. Um, yes, there's something good about me. What can I be? Um, that is the love of God. Um, so that that's what, what has the that's love what, of God got to do with you? The love of so, God is the love of God, not the love of the gate. So because I love God and um, because I have him and he dwells in me, he directs or sort of guides most things that I do. And um, in that way, I... As a result, you believe there is something good about you? Yes. So I believe that there's, there's something good about me because of those things that he helps me to do. Uh, let, me, let me go a little bit further with you. Okay. Does God help you to do things? Or does he do things for you? Um, hmm. I think that he, <laughs> I think that it's both ways. Um, so, you would have to do those things, but you know it is not ordinary. You know it is not you who is doing it. Uh -uh. That you know, but yourself. Yes, that's if it why. Is, if that's if why it I... is not you who is doing it, yeah, and it isn't you who is doing it, is it? Uh, no, but in the in the flesh. So he uses your body. Whatever so he uses, while... whatever he uses, is still about him. Still about him, yeah. Okay, so in that in that respect, I I think I understand it. I'm not I'm not talking any respect. My question is still a general one. Does he do things for you, or does he help you to do things? I think he does things for me. So you cannot say that. You cannot now say that you are good because of what he does. I'm talking about what you do. Mm. Okay, <laughs> and that's that. That was why I was uh, sort of referring to um, Dotun's question, because I would have started by saying that I don't think that I'm good. In me, I know. Okay, let me let, let, let me let me give you the latitude to answer the question you want to answer the way you want to answer it. Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah. Yeah, so 
first of all, I do not think that I am good because just before I joined this service, um, I, I was sitting on my computer and I don't, sorry, a, a bit of interruption, there was a call coming. And then the thought, this same thought crossed my mind. I found myself, I found myself um, thinking of certain types of people. Oh goodness. And um, I, I, you know, I was wishing them death. You are wishing was, them what? I was wishing them death. There's some people that to die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what did they do? What did they do to you? <laughs> and, uh, I I paused for a moment. That's why I, God is God knows how to. Um, God knows how to God God knows how to set set people up. I didn't know that this topic um, <laughs> would come up because I'm still working. I just I just looked at the time and then I, I picked my phone and I I'm in the service and this is what we are talking about, you know. So while I was having that thought, it was that question that came to my mind: saying, "You think you're a good man? Can you see that men you have evil thoughts?" So that's, that's, that's the scripture that came to my mind. The thoughts of men are evil, you know? So when you ask this question, that's why I wanted to go back to Dotun's, the way you asked Dotun, because that is the position. I just, I just condemned myself. I just told myself, look, you are evil. It's just God that is helping you. For you to even think about this <laughs> thing in your head, <laughs> for you to even think about this thing at all in your head, you are evil. So forget what people tell you outside. Oh, you do want tiny thing they say oh this man is a good man because you are giving it how can you how can this thought even cross your mind in the first place you know so when you now ask does it help does it help me or does it do it for me i i had to think about that deeply because it's, it's really not it's really not it's not it's not me it is him who is doing it and is using me to do it so whatever thing i do that seem to be good and people tell you oh you you are, you have done this thing oh you're a good man i have a friend constantly every time we talk or we you know we'll hang out with, say oh Bigay, you're a good man keep saying it i say thank god you, every time he says oh you're a good man i say thank god but really god exposed me today with these thoughts that crossed my mind and i will just realize i am not i am not good and i need his i need him to come and be good you know in me Okay, Rege, thank you. Uh, let, let's see what we can make make out of that. Let me go to Ekwalibu Lawson. Are you are you in a position to contribute to this discussion? Yes, I am. My the, my Nepal line just blew now, sir. <laughs> what has that got to do with us? Well, you're talking about who is good. Nobody is good. The only good thing in me, Stephen, if I'm the ball, who are famous, I live lost the time number, is Jesus Christ. Nothing else is good in me. If I'm lost, are you a better person than Adolf Hitler? No, sir, I'm not. You're not? No, I'm not. Why not? Without Jesus, without Jesus Christ, I'm not better than Adolf leave, leave Hitler. Leave Jesus out of it. I'm not talking about Jesus. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Give okay. people on this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to keep instructing you on this thread. Just answer the question you are asked. Don't bring any other things into it. I didn't ask you about Jesus. We're talking about you. I'm sorry. Yes. Why are you not better than Adolf Hitler? I'm not better than Adolf Hitler because of the grace of God in me. Without the grace of God, I'm worse than Adolf Hitler. Please explain to us how and why you are worse than Hitler. Well, because Hitler, in one way or the other, was a servant of God to fulfill a particular prophecy that God has spoken about to the Israelites. Now, if What, what prophecy Adolf is Hitler, that? Just educate us, because I don't know what prophecy you're talking about. Well, the Jews, the Was Jews there any themselves. Was that, that, that six million Jews will be killed? 
Uh, it depends on the way you interpret it because the, the promise of God to Abraham was that they were going, the, the Jews who are the children of Abraham were going to go through a circle of suffering. Now, that circle of suffering I was, actually I was, I was, I was in Egypt. Yes, but beyond that, you know, the prophecy, I, don't, I think it's Jeremiah or Nehemiah, where the Jews were supposed to congregate one more time as a nation. If you are talking about what, about Judea, uh, uh, so with regards to that prophecy, today we have the state of Israel, which is a physical manifestation of the prophecy of either one of the minor prophets. I'm not too sure whether it was Isaiah, Jeremiah, or Nehemiah. So with regards to that contest, and Adolf Hitler playing that role, I realized that Adolf Hitler was responding to certain commandments or words of God in his prophecy. Taking that aside, I'm not better than Adolf Hitler without the grace and the Holy Spirit of God. I would have been worse than Adolf Hitler. So, so what state are you in now? Are you oh, worse than Adolf of... Hitler? Are you worse than Adolf Hitler now? Or were you no, worse than I'm Adolf not. Hitler before? I, I was worse than Adolf Hitler because Christ was not available. But now I am, I will say I am, by the grace of God, I'm in a, in a different level with over and of Hitler because yeah, of yeah, Jesus much, Christ. And because yeah, much of, better than Hitler now. Yes, in Christ, in Christ, please mind you, in Christ, I'm far better off than Adolf Hitler. That is my submission. Okay. Uh, Christ, uh, Christ uh, is the denominator. So anything outside Christ, I can't be better than Adolf Hitler. Of course, I can't be better than Adolf Hitler without Christ. Christ is the only reason why I may be better than any son of perdition. Even Buhari, as a matter of fact, without Christ, I'm more than Adolf Hitler and Buhari. Okay, so let me understand this before letting you go. The Ipalibo lesson that is currently in Christ is better than Adolf Hitler. Yes, yes, okay. affirmatively, yes. Okay. All right, all right. We, we've had you now, so, so that, is, you, that is on record. Okay, thank you. Let me see. Do you try to be a good person? No, not really. Are you a good person? Well, um, well, Jesus said none, but God is good. So I don't know if I can say that I'm a good person. Okay, so let me understand what you are, what you seem to be telling us, which is you may or may not realize is different from what Palibo Lawson has told us. You are not a good person, and you don't try to be a good person. I don't think that is my. Uh, That's what you just told us. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, so I'm agreeing with you. It's not. It's, it isn't really what is required of me. So no, I don't try. Okay, you are not a good person, and you don't try to be a good person. No, I don't. Okay, can you think of anything good that you have done? Uh. I would say that perhaps what I've been asked to do, but again, I don't, the, the, the word is a difficult word for me. So I, I try not to think about, use it as a point of definition for anything that I do or am. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, Prince of Israel, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, you sound like you are very far away. Okay. Do you try to, 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 to be good? I try to be good before, sir, but now, no. You don't try to be good anymore? No, no, I don't. Are you a good person? Uh, I think so, yes. So before, you were not good and you were not trying to be good? No, when I said 
before. I I try to be. I try to be good to everybody. I realize I can't be good to everybody. I just, I'm just good. So I, didn't, whether, I, I, did not, I did not ask you about everybody or anybody. I said, do you try to be I good? Know. If you try to be good to I'm one good. person, the answer is I yes. I try to be good, sir. OK. OK, you are saying that you are good in your own case. So you don't have in to try case. to be good. You just no, have to sir, be I'm yourself. Not. I'm just myself. OK, so goodness is natural to you now? By God's grace, sir. All right. OK. Can you think of anything good that you have done recently? OK, one. I, Sister Appa's car was bad, so I had to go to the mechanic every day to make sure that it's working. And when it's done, I checked the card and I took it to her. That's an act of goodness, sir. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing, sir. All right. Let me stay with you for a minute, uh, uh, Israel. Yes, sir. Can an unbeliever do a good thing? No. An unbeliever can't do a good thing. Yeah. Can an unbeliever take Sister Alpha's car to the mechanic and get it repaired and bring it back? Uh, well, okay, yes. Um, so in that what, context, what what what's, what so what differentiates you from the unbeliever? If if you can do the same acts, and according to you, the unbeliever cannot do a good thing. Yes. Um. The, what differentiates me from the unbeliever is that I did it for Christ's sake, for the love of Christ that we share together. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um. Sister Appa, good evening. Sister Appa with us. Hey, good evening. Please try and try and speed up the your capacity to turn on the turn on your, your, your mic. <laughs> huh? We go through this every time. I don't think that it, I think it's possible for you to reduce the time span. Yeah, I was on something else. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean it, it doesn't make any sense. We are here fellowshipping with God. You have to make up your mind. You can't be double-minded. You cannot be doing something else and be <clears> fellowshipping <throat> with God. Hmm? No, can't. not like that. Okay. Explain it to me. If we were if we were meeting actually, would you be doing something else? I was just deleting some something off. So I wasn't on the Zoom itself, but I was um there here. Okay, please, when you're on the Zoom, try to be on the Zoom so that you don't you don't take our time when we call you. And because when I see you on the screen, I assume you are available, all right? Okay. okay. Mr. Alpha, right. when was the last time you had a fight with somebody? When I had a fight with somebody. When was the last time you had a fight with somebody? Such a long time ago, you can't remember. Mm, yes. Maybe maybe a disagreement, but I don't know if that will qualify for a fight. Okay. What was the disagreement about? Can you share it with us? <laughs> Why were you disagreeing with the person? I can't, I, I, you don't remember I, the details. Are you still with us? Hello. Uh, I think you need to fix your system. Your, your system your system is breaking. We can't hear you. Try and fix your system. I'll come back to you. 
Samuka. Yes. You always tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Always. Yes. At all times. Yes, since I learned that not doing so was more dangerous than doing so. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't sometimes, you know, uh, say things for diplomatic reasons. How do you mean? Well, you know, I mean, if somebody is wearing a hat and say, what do you think of my hat? And you really think the hat is lousy. Uh, <laughs> do you tell them I, that your hat is really lousy? Uh, no, if, if what I would do is I'll ask the person, do you really want to know my opinion? Uh, then the person says I, yes. So I'll what, tell him what I feel. I'll just tell him what I feel. Uh, I will not. Uh, have, I will not you, attempt to. I will not attempt to quote it. Have you Have you used that system with your wife? My wife, yes. And it has worked with her. <laughs> she's, I think she's got you used to me. <laughs> she, she's it, has got not, she, it has not gotten you into any hot soup. <laughs> no, she knows. She knows. So, the, the truth is that if she asks my opinion. And I tell her if she doesn't like what I'm if she doesn't like what I'm saying, it will be a case of uh, okay, you are entitled to your opinion, but I like it myself. And I say, okay, good. So let me let me let me rephrase, let me re, not rephrase, let me re ask the question. Do you always say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Always. Like I said, since I learned that it is but, but, it's forget, safer. forget about the sins. I'm talking about now. You always yes. say the truth. And that in itself, what you are telling me now is the truth. Yes, I say the truth. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Adeleke. Yes, sir. Do you always say the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Sam says he does. Do you always say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Always. Mr. Adelike, what happened to you? Mr. Adeleke, are you here? Can you hear me, sir? <laughs> what happened to I you? I said yes. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I just discovered that uh, the, uh, my mic was muted. I, I, I said yes. You I always, always say the truth. You know, but the, 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 the critical mass is always. Yes. Always if, 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 if I have. No, no ifs and buts, so. If you say yes, if, yes, there are no ifs and the yes. Yes. If it is yes, always, yes. there are no ifs, no buts. Yes, you always say the truth. No, 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 if no buts. Yes, yes, sir. Now, there, there, there's a scripture that says we should speak the truth in love. Do you okay, believe that's in correct, that? sir. Okay. Well, that means that... I, I, 100%. But, but that means in some situations... It is not appropriate to speak the truth. Yes, you are right. You are very correct. So do you do you obey the scripture that says you speak the truth in love? Yes, I do. I do. In fact, how uh, do you hold on? Relax. Don't go too fast. So how do you do that? And, and still maintain that you always speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. By contradicting yourself. Well. When I do that, sometimes the the, the uh, I know the, the there are consequences. 
And whether you know there are consequences, you, you, whether you know there are consequences or not, you said you always speak the truth. Now you say there are some times when, because you know there are yes, consequences, yes. you don't speak the truth. I mean, as a contradiction, which one is it? Do you always? No, I, I, I don't mind. I say it. I say so, I, maybe I didn't get. I, I always say the truth. Yes. Do you speak the truth in love? I do. You do. So when the truth I is do. not in when the truth is not in love, do you still speak the truth? Okay. When when the truth is not in love. Yes. Do you still speak the truth? Okay. Okay. I think I understand your question now. Well, when it's not in love, I, 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 well, I don't. I, I I think I agree. I I can now. I can now. Change my uh, answer from the first one that you had. When you said you always, when you underlined it, but I, but I underlined it. it I, I, I can now say it's not always. So it's not all the time you say. Well, the I didn't give it. It's not all the time. I can I agree with that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mister. No, uh, um, 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 let me look on the. Uh, okay, <laughs> go ahead. Well, uh, I always say the truth when I'm in the spirit, but when I'm in the flesh, I do not <laughs> always say the truth. When you are in the spirit, <laughs> I how always say the truth. <laughs> how often are you in the spirit? <laughs> I'm honestly speaking, between you and me, doctor, I wish I was always in the spirit. But for example, with Sister Appa now, I realized that I drove a car to the point where the car had a problem. Now, Israel and, and the Festus are the ones looking over that. In those times, I do not think I was in the spirit. In the flesh, I live in hell. But in the spirit, I live in the heavenly, in the presence of God. So I won't say how often. I will say how I wish that. I'm in the spirit 100% of my waking time in, on earth. So right now, in the spirit, I always say the truth, but in the flesh, I yeah, call but, that. But, but what determines whether you are in the spirit or in the flesh? When I see God, when I hear his words, I'm in the spirit. But when I hear the words of man or respond to the stimuli of the flesh, I'm in the flesh. Are you, in the, like are, you, are, you, are you in the spirit now or in the flesh? Oh, I'm in the spirit right now. That is why my response is, is not bringing argument between you. I mean, you know you are not always fight. But yeah, in yeah. the spirit, I, I, we I never, have, who is we never have a fight. Who is fighting with you? you? Me, are you me and you always <laughs> have a fight when who, I'm in the flesh. Who, who fights with you? When I'm in, <laughs> well, I don't know. You know better. But when I'm in the spirit, we, we are always on, on the same frequency. All right, Ipalibo, thank you very much. Uchechi, good evening. I don't know what time it is in, uh, in California or Nevada. I'm not sure where you are. Good evening, sir. This is Uche. I'm in California. It's yeah. um, 11.57 and I'm at work, but I'm listening and enjoying yeah. the conversation. It's 11.57 11 in the morning. Yes. OK, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, Uchechi, please, who is more truthful, Donald Trump or Bola Tinumbu? Donald Trump. Is more truthful than Bola Tinumbu. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why do you say that? <laughs> because he's uh, very, he's, he, he's very true to himself. He knows his faults and he is open with his faults and his faults are actually his reality. That's his truth. And he talks about it. He doesn't meander and he doesn't tend to uh, say things that he does not believe in. But Bola Tinumbu, on the other hand, will speak and do things that... Um, he projects to be for the community at the end of the day it's a guise to him getting his own 
his own desires, his own personal enrich enrichment. So I would do t uh, Trump than Balatinumbu any day. Okay, so I'm, I'm holding all this, you know, I mean, all, there are so many different comments that I made, that have been made. I don't know whether we can remember all of them, uh, but we have, I, I'm going to see how we can resolve them as we go. I'm, change, I'm still with you. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah. Now, is man fundamentally good? Do you really think that there is something that is fundamentally good about man? Man by himself. Man by himself, no, is not good. But is, there, single, is, is, there, but is there something inside him that is good? Maybe there is a core of him that is good, or is man totally bad? by himself? Um, it depends on the man that we're talking about because we have, generic my man. understanding, the generic man is bad. The generic man totally. is bad. To a great extent, yes. The generic <laughs> man is selfish to a great extent. Hold to on, hold like on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's, that's, what I, that's, what I want, that's what I want to determine. Is it to a great extent or a total extent? Um, uh, Dr. Arivisala, my one of my philosophies in life is that we have more of shades than yes and no. It may not be very correct scripturally, especially when we talk about let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. So in answering this question, I would lean more towards the shades. So 90%, 80 to 90% of man is generally bad. 80 to 90% of But there is a 10% of man that is not bad, that is good. That is, that leans more to uh, uh, the kind, the uh, generous aspect of their DNA. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. God bless you. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, Ms. Yari Misala. Are we sinners by practice or are we sinners by nature? By nature. Please explain. People have been falling short of the glory of God. Do you so, agree or disagree with Uchechi who says that there is a core element in man, maybe that is not totally bad? I disagree with her. I also disagree that Trump is a a better liar or whatever. Yeah. Uh, who, who is better according to you? I think Trump is... I mean, I honestly, he's a shameless liar. I mean, the, they were keeping count of his lies on Twitter. So, I, I know. Uh, Tinubu comes from a culture where uh, you know, they said the Yorubas are prevaricators by, by nature, so I don't even know myself. Well, I will tell you later on why I'm trying to compare them. Uh, well, thank you, yeah, Missy. Uh, choo -choo. Yes, sir. Is it in your nature to be a good person? I, I don't think so. So it is in your nature to be a bad person? I think so, yes. I think it is in man's nature to be bad. We just try to be good. That's why sometimes doing good, it's work. It takes work and conscious effort. Chuchu, can we be better than we are? If you say we are not good people, can we be better than the bad people that we are. Yes, by the help of God, with the Holy Spirit, we can. Is the Holy Spirit trying to make us better people? Or is he trying to make us good people? He's trying to make us good people. So you are, you, are, you are rejecting your first position, which is that we can be better. So when you say we can we be better, yeah, it's still saying that we can be good people. 
so that's how I see it. That's why I said he's trying to help us make no, sure a, a, a good a good person is not a better person. A better person <laughs> is simply a degree away from his badness. Whereas a good person mm -hmm. is totally good. Yes, that's why I, I said the Holy Spirit is trying to make sure to help us to be good people. Okay, that but, then, but, but then you said that we can be better people. We can be better from the bad that we are. We can mm, be... it's, it's, it's not the same thing. You, you started from we are bad people. I said, can we be better? You said yes. Okay. Then I said, can we be good? Can we, can we be good people? And you say yes. If we can be good people, a good person cannot be a better person. Agreed. Can, can God be better? God is good. The spirit can he, is good. Can, can, can he be better? He, he cannot be outside of himself. He is good. That just good is the ultimate good. It's not something, there is no better to that good. Okay. But is that the good that you are when you say that we can be better? When I say we can be better, yes, yes I'm saying we can move away from the bad to be Precise, that good, which is be better. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's just leave it that way because you know, in fact, we are not we are not at the level of the Holy Spirit yes, yet. But you say yeah, we can yeah. be better people. Yes, so how, can we, how, how can we be better people? When are we going to be these better people? When are we going to be the good people that the Holy Spirit is? He's helping us. I think it's when, when, not when. I'm not saying he's not helping us. I say when. Okay. The question is when. Are we going to be better people now in this lifetime? Are we going to be the good people that he wants us to be in this lifetime? That one, I'm not sure. I, I, I okay, can all right. That. Again, you know, again, just hold that thought. I'm going to come back to you because there are people who have said so many things tonight that are totally fundamentally unscriptural. That's why we're talking about it tonight. We have said things that run contrary to the grain of scripture. But there are things that we just assume. Uh, there are things that we just assume. I'm not, talk, I'm not just talking about, about uh, Chuchu's, uh, Chuchu's answer. Uh, let me go to Prince. Prince, who is a better person? Someone who beats his wife or somebody who doesn't? Is Prince here? Again, people are on the screen. When you call them, they disappear. So where did you go? Are you talking to me, sir? <laughs> well, are you with us or you are not? My network just we really just went and came back again. So that's what I was wondering. Who is a better person? Someone who beats his wife or someone who does not? I don't know. I don't know how to who is a better person, someone who beats his wife or someone who does not. I don't know how to um, answer that. Um, I don't know how to answer that, honestly. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you. Um, Bege and Dang. Yes, sir. Who is a better person? Somebody who beats his wife or somebody who doesn't beat his wife? Um, I think we cannot judge we cannot use that um that to judge because you can have a situation where someone does not beat his wife but his words you know yes, but, but, uh, but Bege and Dang, i'm the one who is establishing the parameters and mm -hmm. the one introducing his words i didn't introduce his words everything else is equal 
Okay. Yeah. So one beats his wife, and one doesn't beat his wife. So just limit it to what I'm asking. So that, Who is right. better? Um, I I think he, the one who does not beat his wife is better. Okay, who is a better person? Someone who smokes cigarettes or somebody who doesn't? <laughs> I think someone who doesn't smoke cigarettes is, is a better, better person. Time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. Let me ask you a last question. Who is the better person? Somebody who commits adultery or somebody who does not? Well, I think the one who does not commit adultery is a better person. Okay. Thank you, Bigge. Uh yeah. Yes. There's Stephen Lawson. None of, none of them are better. See, eh? a better person cannot be a better person without Christ. It is only Christ that makes a man better in any sense. So whether you beat your wife or you don't beat your wife, you are not a better person of the either. But if you have Christ in you and the Holy Spirit rules you, then you are a better person. Okay, so let, 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 me, let me put it in an easier way for you to help us with. Because I think that uh, you are the only one who is beginning to understand the nature of this particular study. Let me put it in an easier way for you. Who is the good person? The person who beats his wife or the person who doesn't? None of them is a good person. The only person that can make you good is the Holy Spirit and is Jesus Christ. Goodness does not come from, from a man. It comes from God. So if you are in God, then anything you do is good. But if you're not in God, you're just wasting your time. You're not different from the Muslim or the Buddhist or the free thinker who does good. Goodness can only... So it doesn't matter whether you be your wife... by God. If, and... so, so, so let me understand what you're telling us. It doesn't matter whether you beat your wife or whether you don't beat your wife, you're a bad person. The Holy Spirit will determine what leave is the Holy good. Spirit out of it. I'm not talking of the Holy Spirit now. Okay, okay. just limit it to what I'm asking you. I'm not talking of the Holy Spirit. I'm okay. talking about so okay. it doesn't matter if you beat your wife or you don't beat your wife, you are a bad person. <laughs> yes or no. If you beat your wife or you don't beat your wife, you are not a better person. Simple. I didn't, I didn't, my last question did not have better in it. Sorry, I think uh, I had a network problem. Okay, there's too much noise coming from you. So let, let's just leave that. Um, okay, I'll be uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, there's a gentleman here called Obina. I, I, I don't know him, but um, Obina, can you identify yourself? Obina Victor E. What's can you hear me now? Okay, we are, I remember you. Okay, yeah, I can yes, hear you. I can see you. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Now, Obina, which is better? The tree that has two bad apples or the tree that has 20 bad apples? Which is better, the tree that has two bad apples or the tree with, tw the, the, the tree with 20 bad apples? Which is a better tree? I, I don't know how to decide the answer to that because they both have bad apples, so I think the uh, the same. Yeah, they both have bad apples, but one has only two, but another one has 20. I don't know why one has two, and I don't know why the other has 20. You don't have to know the reason why. I didn't supply you with the reason why. 
I just told you so one you has... which one is which one is the bad tree? Yes, so so or which one is the better the, tree? Yes. I didn't get the question now. I said which one is better? The tree that has two bad apples or the tree that has twenty bad apples. Well, if it's about sight, you say the one with two bad apples are better. Okay, all right, thank you. Yes, uh and Dank, please go ahead. Oh, okay, I think he just answered, um, you know, in line with what I went to answer. The tree with um, two bad apple is a better is a better tree because why give us false hope? You pack all the apples and they, they are all bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, let, let us let us try and try try, try to resolve this. This let's look at James two ten. Okay, because the obvious answer is this that none of them is any good and no, no, none is better than the other one. James 2.10, because both have bad apples. Once you have bad apples, that's it. You can't be good, okay? Because a good tree will produce good fruit. But a bad tree will produce a bad fruit. So it doesn't matter whether one's fruit is two or whether one's bad fruit is 20. Let's take all this, what we've been saying back to principles. For whoever shall keep the whole law, yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. Now let's apply that to what we are discussing. Whoever shall keep the whole law, yet stumble in one, he is guilty of all. In which case, so one only has two bad apples. He's bad. Another one has 20 bad apples. He's bad. Both of them, that is none that is better than, you know, because once you have a bad apple, you are condemned. Once you have a bad apple, you are condemned. Now, we started with the scripture, we asked, is man fundamentally good? Man cannot be good. Let's understand it. Uh, and then we will come back to uh, Begay's earlier answer. If we look, for instance, at Psalm 143, where we, we started reading that there's none, there's none righteous, no, not one. But if we look at Psalm 143, verse 2. The psalm says to God, do not enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight no one living is righteous. Well, that's really where we started this discussion. We started the discussion with the scripture that said there is none that is good. Of course, you know the scripture where Jesus says no one is good but one. And that is God. And so it really doesn't matter. Say, so, you know, I've, I've been asking some really quite idiotic questions. Who is more truthful, Donald Trump or Palatinumbu? It's irrelevant. They are liars. <laughs> you know, we can't get a better liar than another liar. Not from the point of view of God. Huh? So there is nothing that is good about man. Nothing. The Bible says that God condemned sin in the flesh. Um, somebody was giving me an answer. He said, you know, when he's in Christ, he's good. Say it's a lie. Because 
when you are in Christ, you are no longer you. Huh? Let's understand it, okay? When you are in Christ, you are now a member of Christ. So when you are in Christ, in order to be in Christ, you have to deny yourself. You have to lose yourself in order for Christ to not take control. That's why if you do anything right, you can't take any credit for it. It is Christ that is the one doing it. If once you take credit for it, it's unrighteous because there is nothing that you can do that can be right. And God will never accept anything that you do as righteous. He will only accept that which Christ does as righteous. So that's why I posed questions like, do you try to be good? And yet, Mr. answered, you know, gave me an answer that I was looking for, which is that it's a waste of time trying to be good because you can never be good. You can't. So basically, uh, you don't have to start harassing yourself in order to be good. If you do something that is good, you may or may not know it, it is Christ. If you do something that is bad, that's the only time we can assume that it is you that is doing it. Because we know that you and I are specialists in doing bad things. Huh? So let me proceed and ask some further questions. Um, Samukwa, God said if he could find one person in Sodom, one righteous person, he will not destroy Sodom. Did he find any righteous person in Sodom? No, he did not. Why didn't he find any righteous person in Sodom? Because everybody had corrupted their ways and they were ungodly. And um, even, I mean, even Lot that um, he was trying to save could not have been considered righteous because he still went ahead and destroyed Sodom. So, if if Lot had been considered righteous, he would not he would have, for the sake of Lot, not destroyed Sodom. But that he destroyed Sodom means he didn't find anybody. Hmm. So, Sam, under the law, why would God set an exam that he knows nobody can pass? 613 laws of Moses. And he has already said, we read it in James, if you fail one, you fail all 613. Why would he set an exam that he knows nobody can pass? Um, I think that it would be because he would want us to understand that we need him to be able to go through the different things that we are going to experience in life because without him there's so many of these things that we cannot cope with so if the things are such that we cannot cope with we do not have a choice but to go and meet him do he's the examiner he said the exam so go and meet him and say, oh, God, this thing I, i'm not sure i can do it to uh, what can how can you help me you know, so I, I think that it's designed to bring us to a point where we recognize 
our need for his help because life is just too complicated for us to be able to navigate it on our own. Um, he knows ahead of time the kinds of things that we, 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 we will be coming across. And we may not know it, but by the time uh, it begins to unfold, life begins to unfold, you know, to us, we discover that we may not be uh, uh, well prepared to, to be able to handle the things that come our way, that we find ourselves involved in. I, I think it's a little, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a lot more than what you have said. I'm not even sure if what you have said addresses the question. So Sam, hold that thought. Let me, let me pose it to some other people. They gave, why would God set an exam, the law of Moses, which he knew nobody would pass? Um. I, I, I have similar thoughts um, as Sam, really. I just think that he needs people to uh, understand that he is God and come to, come to him for help. Uh, I, I don't see any reason why he would set an exam. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the reason is actually quite straightforward. Uh, and it has nothing to do with the answers that either you or Sam have given. Yeah, Mr. Ari Bissala, yes. Um, Jesus said that I've come to fulfill the law. Yeah. So you, you, you set an exam and you have already given the answer. So, well, that's what I, I think. Yeah, I've already given the answer. What do you mean by that? He is the answer. He's, he's going to, he's fulfilled the law already. So he's the answer to the question. Um, you're not addressing. <laughs> you're not addressing my question. Why would he give the exam to man when he knows that man cannot pass the exam? You've already accepted my first answer, which is that he's fulfilling he's the one that is going to fulfill. He fulfilled the law already. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let's let's get this so that we can move forward. Okay. Number one, he wants us to know that his standards are completely different from ours, okay? So uh, um, his standards cannot be met by man, all right? Now, he's now going to send Jesus, who is going to meet the standard, okay? So he it is, it is a deliberate process because he wants to reveal Christ, number one, we can never meet his standards, okay? And even now, some people say we are now in Christ. Okay? We still can't meet his standards, all right? One person met his standards, that is Jesus, okay? So what he has, what he has done is he has made us to understand that his standards are beyond the standards of man. Uh, so we can draw certain conclusions from that, okay? None of us met his standards, so we are not better than anybody else. Don't say, this one tells more lies, this one tells less, less lies. It, it, make, it, it makes no difference. I had a question here. Okay, I said that uh, if, if your employer is only looking for men who are 20 feet tall, what does it matter if you are taller than others? It makes no difference. What does it matter if everybody else is six feet tall, but you are eight feet tall? Your employer is not looking for eight feet tall people. He's looking for 20 feet tall people. It doesn't matter then whether somebody is 10 feet, another person is two feet, all the two feet and the 10 feet are irrelevant. They did not meet his standards. He's asking for 20 feet. Huh? One person met his standards and that is Jesus, okay? So even now, you say you are in Christ. Don't forget that you still don't meet his standards. 
Don't don't pull yourself to think that now that you are in Christ, you are meeting his standards. It's a lie. Once you do that, you are on your own. You are taking your, 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 you are, you are taking your credit on your own. Whereas the credit is 100%, it belongs to Jesus. The credit is Christ. Okay? And he has told you, without me, you can do absolutely nothing. You can't fulfill any of the righteousness of God outside of Christ. If you ever seem to do anything that is righteous now, never take any credit for it. It has nothing to do with you. It is Christ that is in you that deserves the credit. So sometimes people will thank you for doing something. You say, please, thank God. Everything about you must redound now to the glory of the only person that is achieving it, which is Jesus that is in you. It is not you, because if you are in Christ, one of the first requirements is that you must deny yourself. You can't deny yourself, put on Christ, and then start claiming credit for that which Christ has done. Otherwise, you have not denied it yourself. You can't have Jesus as your savior and still take credit for saving yourself in whatever situation or guys. No. Then you're on your own. Do your salvation yourself. Yes, Mr. Deliki. Yes, sir. I wanted to the one or two things I wanted to say. Well, as I, I want us to look at it from the beginning when God created Adam and Eve. From that point, it's already shown from that point that that Adamic nature that was been there was, was not up to at all. That was why when God created them, he knew that even though he said, this fruit and this fruit you must not, you, you must not touch, you know, he knew that they would go, they would touch it. That's he put it there. You understand? They fell. So from that point, we already knew that man, man it's not good at all. It's not good and it cannot do anything. That's why Jesus says that we can do nothing without him, which means that we have to make sure that that damage must die. Then when he dies, then the spirit, which is the spirit of God, of, of God, God is the one that will now live. That is the one that will be able to do whatever. Because he saw in scripture, he says, are not our ways. Thoughts, once we get to the level of, say, of the equation at all, the price, the image to control must be the one. That's the. Thank you, sir. Does Adam's sin have anything to do with you? I, 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 I think I think at, at a particular point, it has to do with me also, because at a particular point, I sinned too. I fell into sin too, before I received Christ. So does, does it have anything to do with you? Can you be held responsible? Are you part of the sin of Adam? I, I think that before, I was I was part of it before I, before I become born again. When I become born again, that's a new life. Why do you think you are part of it? Was because it it's Adam the Adamic nature. Was, the, was the, the Adamic right? nature is a sinful. Is a, the, the reason is that it's a sinful nature, which sin occupies occupies the body, occupies the man. It is sinful. It is just a sinful life. It's only when. How did you get the, the nature of Adam? Uh, getting the nature of power because there's a scripture that says that uh, uh, all have sin and have shot God, shot, 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 come shot the uh, uh, glory of God. But that, that is not talking about Adam. How did you get the sin? The, 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 you are the one that is talking about the Adamic nature. 
Yes. How did the Adamic nature come to you? Well, I was born into sin. So I think that that's the, the nature has been there. But that's how it all started from the beginning. Before, you know, the, the only change that came was when I gave my life to Christ. I don't know. <laughs> you, are, you are running away from my question. Never mind. Okay, all right. <laughs> Obviously, you cannot answer the question. Sometimes it's always best to just say, I don't know, rather than give some strange answer or whatever. Benedict, you had your hand up. Um, yes, good evening, sir. Good evening, Charles. Why did you run away? Um, <laughs> when you said, um, um, we well, have Mr. Aron that uh, how did he got involved in Adam's sin? I wanted to say, that, um, I think the judgments that God declared on Adam's, the was on man, or it was on man. Yes, but you know, but God, why, why would God declare a judgment? I mean, you know, okay, so you, you committed a sin, and then God declares a judgment on me. I mean, does that, does that make sense? Are you not the one um, who committed this? In, 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 in physical uh, situation, does not make sense, but okay. God knew why, why he make it happen. Why did, he make it, why, did he make, why did he make it that way? Because we're just talking about flesh. No, forget it. Uh, uh, Benedict, put your hand down. You don't know the answer. Let me see if I can get somebody. <laughs> Let me see if I can get somebody else. I just, I just guessing and talking. <laughs> Let me see. You know, look. I, I, I had to come to this, and I'm going to go back again on Sunday because I had to come to this because of what happened on Monday. On Monday, different some people were ascribing certain qualities to themselves, which scared me. Yes, which is she? Does it have anything to do with the fact that we are made in God's image? And um, uh, God knowing the ability that he put in us, example, the issue of the Tower of Babel. If we are not held accountable under the Adamic nature, we would not rely on him. I'm just asking. Okay, let, let, me, let me put it this way, right? Okay. Sin came into the world through Adam. Okay? So because, you know, I mean, there was no sin in the world before Adam, but sin came into the world through Adam, and it apparently it infected all of us in one way or the other, because all sinned. Huh? But the beauty of it is that because we have uh, combined, we are, we are put together with Adam, okay, by the same token, we can be put together with Jesus. Now, let's, 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 let's understand the, the, the logic of our salvation, okay? As in Adam all sinned, so in Christ, all shall be made alive because the sin of Adam is responsible for everybody. Huh? The righteousness of Jesus is responsible for everybody by the same logic. If you want to divorce yourself from Adam because you want to stand alone, you will also have to stand alone from Jesus. Huh? Because that is the way that God has right from the beginning determined our salvation. Okay? So there is actually, it is to our benefit that Adam's sin is ascribed to everybody. Uh, let's look at Galatians 3.22. 3, it is to our benefit that Adam's sin is ascribed to everybody because if it's not ascribed to everybody, then Christ's righteousness will not be ascribed to everybody. And we need his right to everybody because it is only through that ascription that we can be righteous. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it by ourselves. We need Christ to help us to accomplish it. 
So a lot of what we are saying today, uh, maybe we'll put it in a, a better context on Sunday. Because uh, but the scripture confined all under sin and the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the Lord, kept for the faith which would afterward be relieved, re revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Uh, so the law was there. It brings us to Christ because it shows us that we can't make it by ourselves. That's what the law does. The law reveals to us that you can't fulfill God's standard. It's just, it, it, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts, it is too high for us. Huh? So once we realize that, we can't continue to do what we were doing on Monday. Some of us were saying that we can still not, no, I can still do, do I can, you know, no, I can't have, no. You, you, you are saying that, huh? you are taking yourself, you are being a lone ranger, and you can't do that and be, still be in Christ. No, no, no. Let's look at Luke. 1810. I just want to read this in closing. Luke 1810. I said we will look at this more fulsomely, maybe not all fulsomely, but we will look at it again on Sunday. Luke 18. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you. I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. A man cannot be good except through Jesus Christ. The good man in Christ has lost his identity. He has put on Christ. Uh, is a new creation. You understand? That new creation is Jesus Christ. Don't take credit for any good thing that you do. Uh, any good thing that ever happens through you, Christ is a doer of the work. Begay, please pray for us. Thank you. Father, we want to thank you for your word this evening. We thank you for the opportunity to pray bread at your table. Thank you for the bread of life you have given us this evening. Lord, come and make it life in us. Come and help us to know that we are nothing without you. Come and help us to know that we cannot be good without you. Father, we need you to come and make us good, to come and continue to help us, to come and continue to lighten our paths, Lord. Give us better understanding of your word. Give us better understanding, Lord. Thank you for everyone here. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our loved ones far and near. Lord, we ask that as we go, Lord, you go with us. Bless each and every one of us. 
Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Say to the righteous, you are the apple of God's eye. Samu Kwa. You are the apple of God's eye. The apple of God's eye. The apple of God's eye. You are the apple of God's eye. You are all the apple of God's eye. You are the apple of God's eye. Puche. Nice. Ozioma, you are the apple of God's eyes. Yeah, me see. You are the you apple, are of, the apple of God's eyes. I love you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.